Hello, 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 and welcome back to Small Biz Better Summit. We are so happy to have you all here for day two, an amazing day two of the Small Biz Better Summit. We have really been, really been having a lot of great sessions, a lot of great speakers, a lot of great discussions on money matters and money issues. So this uh, month's theme is let's talk about money. Hey, let's talk about it. There's a lot of questions that come up around money, a lot of issues and challenges and opportunities as well that come up around money. And so let's talk about it. Let's um, get as much information and as much education and empowerment around money that we can, especially those things that aren't talked about too often. And so we've been focusing a lot on that this summit and day two of this summit, the exact same. We're going to be talking even deeper about money issues. I have a lot of great speakers ahead for day two of this summit. We had a lot of great speakers in day one of the summit and just going to continue that today with day two of the summit, the Let's Talk About Money edition. So in the chat box, if you will acknowledge where you're from so we can give you a quick shout out. Uh, we love to acknowledge everyone that joins us from all over the world. Um, and we have people from the United States, Orlando. Awesome. We're from Orlando as well. So we thank you for joining us. We have Southern California, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, New York. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Texas, India. Awesome. So great to have you. The UK. Awesome. We love the we love our international uh, people that join us internationally. Canada. Thank you for joining us as well. We have Michigan, Tennessee, looks like. Awesome. South Carolina. I'm originally from South Carolina. That's awesome. We have Iowa. I went to school in Iowa. Awesome. Colorado, Texas. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. If we didn't, um, if we didn't acknowledge you, no, it's just because there's so many that are passing by. We can't acknowledge you all, but we definitely thank you for joining us. Australia. I see that coming up several times or the same person typing in Australia, Australia, Australia. But thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you joining from all over the world. And please continue to share it with your friends, your colleagues, this free summit. We really just on a mission to continue to help empower people and help them realize what are some of the small business ownership issues that we need to tackle and address and just bring a higher sense of awareness around those and let's do something about them. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing the link with your friends and colleagues so that we can uh, continue to reach more and more people with this free uh, summit that we uh, will continue to do. We get a lot of great positive feedback. Your participation is great and awesome. So we just thank you all for uh, what you do and what you have done um, to, uh, to help get education out about small business better issues. How can we make small business better? How can we do small business better? Awesome, awesome. So as we kick off day two of the Small Biz Better Summit, let's jump right on in on into our marketing session. And so if you can see my screen, give me a yes in the chat box. Also questions that you have throughout, please let me know in the chat box. Um, we will, you won't be able to see the questions, but we will, we can see them on our end and we are moderating the questions. So just enter your question in the chat box and we will definitely be answering your questions in a live Q and a session later today, uh, with, uh, myself and Mr. Tommy Jones, who also has a session later today as well. And so you will have all the information for that sent in your email, uh, for all, every session that you've registered for. Um, and so uh, you'll get the information on that, just like you got the information for today to register for this session. All right. So let's jump right on in to today's session. Wow. More marketing for your money, more cash for your campaigns. And as I think about that, it's really something we get a lot of questions about. How do we get more marketing for our money? How do we get greater cash from our campaigns? And yesterday, part one, we gave you some of the foundational issues that you'll or foundational topics to tackle when it comes to getting more marketing for your money. How do we leverage these great resources? And so without any further ado, let's jump right on in. For those of you who were not here yesterday, we'll give you a very quick, very, very quick overview of what we talked about yesterday. So in about five minutes, we're going to cover yesterday's uh, 45 minutes. Uh, just to give you a quick overview, uh, do feel free to watch the rewatch the session of yesterday's uh, session as well, because it gives you a great foundation for today. Um, and uh, we'll give you, like I said, we'll give you a quick uh, five minute summary of what we talked about yesterday, just so you can be up to speed on the parts that we're talking about today. 
So first of all, hi, I'm Marcus. Great to meet you virtually. And I'm the founder, owner, and growth uh, chief growth strategist of Social Marquee. Social Marquee is the company that actually sponsors this Small Biz Better Summit. So um, and the, this is my company. It's called Social Marquee. Social Marquee actually stands for Social Marketing Quintessence. Uh, many people think Marquee is a play on my name that just happens to be coincidence. Uh, but social marketing quintessence is what social marquee stands for. And quintessence is just the highest degree of anything you can achieve. We set the standard, we set the bar is what quintessence means. So social marketing quintessence is us. And uh, so we I've actually been a digital marketer now for 20 years. I cannot believe it. Uh, started back in 1999 and I've had this company now for 11 years, going on 12 years as soon as the new year hit. So really, really excited about that. At Social Marquee, we are what you call brain and behavior experts. What does that mean? So at my company, we study the mind and more importantly, the subconscious mind, how the subconscious mind naturally, biologically is wired to work. And we infuse our campaigns and design our campaigns to align with how the subconscious mind of our customers are designed to work. So our clients' clients, how do they make buying decisions? What are the processes that go into their buying decisions? not only on a surface level, but beyond the surface, beyond the thought processes that are going on in their mind that they're not even aware that goes on in their mind. How can we align with them to better meet their needs, better meet their uh, wants and needs uh, through our customers, through our clients and our clients then meet their needs through their clients. And so this is what we call our USP, our unique selling proposition. If your company does not have one, make sure you do have one. We're actually going to talk about that a little later today. Uh, but your unique selling proposition, what separates you from everybody else in your field, everybody else in your um, arena, in your industry. So we get this a lot of uh, people. Sometimes you know that you're different or you might know that you're different, but we have to effectively communicate that to the end user in a way that they actually can appreciate in a way that is actually significant for them. Um, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit today as well. So we are what you call we do digital marketing at a cellular level. Uh, reaching the subconscious mind, reaching how we can actually help align uh, with our consumers' needs, desires, wants, and then we align with them our products and services that meet or exceed those needs, desires, and wants. So our tagline, we are digital marketing designed specifically for business growth and more importantly, better digital marketing for business growth. Why is that? So you can have marketing, you can have promotion, but marketing and digital marketing design for business growth is a little different. It takes a lot more effort. It takes a lot more uh, market research, just takes a lot more. And yes, you get more from it. But yeah, a lot of times it, that that additional effort up front can be, oh, my goodness, I didn't know I have to do all of this. And so we position ourselves as better digital marketing for business growth uh, for companies that Hey, if you are fine where you are, you don't want to grow, you don't want to scale, that's fine. We probably wouldn't be the best agency for you because we are designed specifically for digital growth and business growth. Uh, so the things that we do, the effort that we're putting in is to how do we grow your business um, and that those efforts are a lot different than if you are just fine sustaining where you are, which is also fine as well. Uh, just depends on what is your goal for the business. Are we just having a lifestyle business? Hey, I just want to keep this same income that we've had, as long as I can keep that great, or do I want to grow this business, um, continue to grow uh, our income, grow our impact and grow um, uh, our reach uh, to the marketplace? And so those are the companies that work best for us and our mission. We are good people helping good people positively impact massively more and more good people. Uh, and so we feel that as long as we're doing our mission, uh, the money comes. And that's one reason we have these summits for absolutely free. Our mission is how do we help good people impact, positively impact massively more and more good people. These summits, they reach thousands of people. We're happy about that. And as long as we are staying true to our mission and genuinely wanting to help people, we find the money comes. And so that's one thing we also talk about a little more today on today's session of how do you leverage, uh, how do you leverage the uh, reach that you have? How do you leverage the income you have as opposed to thinking everything so money based? How do we fulfill our purpose and our vision and our mission more and then see that the money comes in as a result of that? And so we're going to talk about a lot more of that in more detail as we go further. All right. So time for a quick review, very quick review about what we talked about yesterday so that you can be brought up to speed. And so what we talked about yesterday, we 
uh, we we talked about money. <laughs> no, no surprise, right? No surprise that the Let's Talk About Money Summit, the marketing session was talking about money. And so, of course, money is a very important topic. A lot of us talk about how we need more money. A lot of us talk about, hey, there's just not enough money, not enough time. Um, and a lot of times you might be looking like this woman on the screen here, like, hey, you know, I know there's money. I know there's money around, but why is it not in my wallet? Why is it not in my bank account? And a lot of times we give money, uh, and I know this might sound interesting, but we give money a lot of times a lot more power than it deserves. And so one of my mentors actually told me this quote and he said, Marcus, if you got to the point where money is the solution or money is the problem, then you haven't gotten to the real root of the problem. I'll say that again. If you've gotten to the point where money is the solution or money is the problem, you haven't gotten to the real root of the problem. Uh, this is by uh, one of my mentors, John Rivers. And what he said uh, was a lot of people say, oh, yeah, if I had more pro more money, this problem wouldn't be a problem. Or if I had um, or the problem here and why we can't grow our business is because of money. And uh, he really cautioned me on looking at my mindset on this issue about giving that power to money. And the reason he said this uh, was because money, as he said, is money is a resource. And a lot of times you probably heard it on the news. People win the lottery. They won millions of dollars. And then three to five short years later, they're broker than when they were before they won the lottery. How is that possible when they just got these untold millions? How are they now broke or even more broke than they were before they won the lottery? Um, it's also, uh, oh, um, uh, I forgot this point here, but it's interesting that of the population, the most uh, common people who declare bankruptcy are people who win the lottery. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. If you just got this free money, how could you now be declaring bankruptcy? This doesn't make sense to me. Um, and CNBC did a study that was talking about how uh, people think money is the root of their problem or if they had more money, they would be happier. So many things. But that study also found that more money did not equal more happiness. And so why is this? Why do we give all this pressure to money? Why do we give all this power to money and give ourselves all this pressure to make much more money? And uh, what my mentor helped me see was that money is really a resource. And so the problem is never a lack of resources themselves, but the problem is a lack of resourcefulness. So if you don't have the money, how do you get the money? What are some things you can do currently to help you leverage and get money? How can you improve your resourcefulness? And then the resources come. So resources just like your team, uh, resources like your time, all these things are resources. How can you be resourceful in getting more of these things? And so that's one thing that one mindset shift that he really helped me out with that really made a difference for me. And we pass that on to you as well. So we went into more detail on that yesterday in yesterday's talk. I don't want to expound too, too much on what we talked about yesterday. Just give you a quick overview so that we can jump into today's content. You might remember, excuse me, we talked about this as well, the iceberg analogy. So uh, the iceberg is what people, uh, the iceberg analogy talks about what people see at the top they rarely think about what went into make that final product that they see. So success here is one example. So people see the success, uh, but they don't see the failure that led to that success. They don't see the heartbreak, the lonely nights, the arguments with your significant other. They don't see any of those things. All they see is the success. And this has been, uh, I was about to make up a word, prevalated. <laughs> this is uh, more prevalent now, especially with social media. Because on social media, it's just all talking about the success. Hey, make all this money here and do all this thing. That's all you see is the top of the iceberg. But you rarely see what went in to make that uh, success. You rarely see what went to make that million or what went to make that business or that campaign a success. All right. And so these are some of the things we want to highlight here, especially as it relates to marketing as well. So yesterday we covered this marketing iceberg. <clears throat> And we discussed everything in marketing that you can see or anything that you can perceive with the five human senses, uh, see, touch, taste, hear, smell. I am think I'm missing one or I repeated one, but you get the idea. Those five senses. Think of that. Anything that you can uh, uh, perceive with the five human senses, those are part of the five percent of the marketing iceberg that you can see. The other 95 percent of the marketing iceberg are things that you can't see, but that 95% actually holds up everything that you do see. For example, your website, your logo, 
social media, you know, all these things you can see that's part of the 5%. And it's not your fault. You know, you if you didn't know that things existed, you're probably not li looking for those things that you didn't know existed, especially since you can't see them. So we can't see the 95%. And so that's where everybody's attention goes is to that 5% that we can see the website, the social media, the logo, the likes and follows, you know, of course we like to see a lot of likes and follows and those things. Uh, but the true success, the true impact are on those things that are beneath the iceberg. Cause those things that are beneath the surface of the water are those things that hold up that 5% and those things that are beneath the iceberg, your strategy, which most businesses, their strategy is all right, we're going to make money. Um, and a lot of times those strategies don't work as well without the definition that we're looking for. Your mindset as a business owner, what is your mindset and how are you going to grow your business? Uh, be responsible to your customers, be responsible to your personnel, your employees, your contractors, etc. cetera. Um, your mindset is one of the most important hidden factors of your marketing success, but not only just marketing success, business success. So this uh, and not only business success, life success. So this iceberg principle really has application in several different arenas, marketing, business, your life, um, just about any arena you can imagine, your relationship, all these arenas, this iceberg principle could, uh, could hold true. The customer experience, what is it like when they traverse their journey with you? What is their journey like from the time that they are first introduced to you uh, to the time that they're ever even complete with you? So what is that complete journey like and that customer experience like? And we gave several examples about that. Also true branding. So a lot of people are shocked to see branding in the 95% that you don't see. They're like, wait a minute, I, I see my logo all the time. And we want to point, point out here, your logo is part of the 5%. Your logo should remind people of your brand, but your brand is actually more about that experience. How do people experience you when they're done with your products and service, when they step away, when they, um, leave to go home? Are they still talking about it to their significant other? Are they still talking about it to their friends and family? Are they still um, engaging and thinking about your brand after they leave the, the proximity of whatever they did when they engaged with your brand? All right. So your logo really just reminds them of that experience. And we gave several examples, Apple, uh, Starbucks, several other examples of uh, good branding and their logo just reminds us of that brand. So we want to make that distinction. Sims, uh, systems, a lot of people don't have their systems, but those are the things that are going to increase your marketing success, your business success. Um, and systems don't have to be technical. Systems can be processes. Systems can be uh, your SOPs or your standard operating procedures. So systems, extremely important. And psychographics. So we made the distinction between psychographics and demographics. Demographics, everything that you can see, everything that you can perceive, <clears throat> everything that you can see about your um, your customers, what ethnicity are they? How old are they? Um, their geography, all these great things. And that's great. But also look at where demographics fall on this on this diagram. They fall on the five percent, the ninety five percent. Those psychographics, psychographics just means what's their mindset like? How do they think? What are their fears? Um, what keeps them up at night around their fears? Uh, what keeps them up at night around the problems that your products and services address for them, uniquely address for them? Uh, where do they get their information? Who do they hang with? All these things are getting into their mindset. And so psychographics is something that has proven over time to be even more effective, exponentially more effective than just using demographics or those things that we can see as a way to reach our customers and categorize our customers. All right. So yesterday we also covered, we covered a lot yesterday, didn't we? All right. Yesterday we also covered the buying process and how people buy. Remember, we use the analogy about dating. And uh, a lot of times people are like, hey, here's my thing. Don't you like my thing? Buy my thing. And a lot of times it's way too soon. They just met you. Um, we gave the analogy if you're when you were dating your significant other or if you are currently dating, uh, even if you when you see someone you're interested in, your first question to them probably is not, will you marry me? Right. You probably strike up a conversation. You probably see if there's a mutual interest. You spend some time with the person. And then after that, you ask the big question. Right. And so the same thing here with the buying process. Think about every interaction you have with your customers, uh, kind of like the buying process. Think of it like you're building a relationship with them. And remember these stages. 
Um, they first become aware of your product, then they uh, determine if they're interested, then is there a desire to act on that interest, and then do they actually act on that interest, right? So we encourage people not to treat this as uh, a lot of times people will try to go from awareness to action in the exact same sentence, like, hey, here's my thing, buy my thing, but oftentimes it's way too soon, especially if we're talking about online, right? And so we always encourage people to remember Meet your customers where they at in the buying process. And we encourage you to design campaigns specifically to each segment in the buying process. All right. And we also talked about satisfaction, customer satisfaction. After they've bought, after they finally decide to take the action to buy, that's really where a lot of the work begins. Think about your relationship. Um, after your significant other says, yes, I'll marry you. That's almost the start of the journey because you got to make sure you keep them happy and make sure that you're doing things together and continue to nurture that relationship. It's not like, hey, they said marry me and now I'm not going to do anything. Uh, that may not work in your best interest, right? Um, so same thing with your business as well. Um, keeping them satisfied is along the lines of customer retention. And so customer retention, uh, once they buy our product and service, are they happy with it? Or are they going to buy again? It costs eight to nine times less to get a customer who's already bought to buy again, as opposed to getting a new customer. So in addition to lead generation strategies, want to make sure we have those customer retention strategies as well. All right. So that's that quick review of yesterday. Now let's get into part two of how to get more marketing for your money and more cash for your campaign. So again, yesterday, I know we went through that really, really fast. Um, watch the replay from yesterday. It's up. It's live. Uh, go ahead and watch that replay to get some uh, background info. But we really want to dive into how do we use that info that we covered yesterday, as well as what we just reviewed. How do we use that in order to really up the money for our marketing and our cash from our campaigns? The first way to do that, and we hinted on this, we want to dive a lot deeper into this, is know who your ideal customer is. Now, we get this a lot. A lot of times people say, hey, well, my customer is everybody. Everybody can benefit from my product or service. We caution you. Anytime you're trying to promote or advertise or reach everybody, especially when you're talking about online, you end up reaching nobody. Anytime you're trying to reach everybody, you end up reaching nobody. Why is that? Well, because now Online, especially online, especially when you're talking about social media, online is just so loud and so crowded, right? You got everybody online trying to sell their thing, trying to say, hey, come buy my thing, come experience my thing or, or give me money or whatever the case may be, right? And so it's so loud and so crowded, you going to that same arena saying, hey, all right, no, don't buy his thing, buy my thing, right? It just gets overwhelming for the end consumer and uh and when they're overwhelmed and when they're confused they do not buy that's just the human mind when it when the human mind is confused and when the human mind is overwhelmed it does not buy it doesn't make um it doesn't make final buying decisions and so what we encourage people to do is know exactly who would be the ideal customer for your product or your service and so that way, instead of trying to speaking to everybody, we're now speaking to John. John has, um, uh, and uh, what the first point here is defining John. So what are the characteristics of John? We like to do what we call defining a character once we know who our ideal customer is, just like your favorite movie or your favorite drama on TV. I like um, Law and Order SVU. It's one of my uh, favorite shows. And um, what they do is they define each character. They define each character in that movie so that you can relate to them or in that show so that you can relate to them. Same thing with your marketing. Define that character. If you know John is the best person who buys these things, let's define John just like he was a character in a movie. John is uh, age 35. He makes $48,000 a year. He has three kids who are age 12, 11, and two. Uh, he has a wife who works as a seamstress at the local at the local um, uh, manufacturing plant uh, whatever the case may be we define that character in extreme detail now you might be thinking well if i define this character of john how do i still um but all my characters aren't necessarily john you're right 
or all my ideal customers aren't necessarily John, but and you're right. But what this does is it creates such clarity in your messaging and it creates something that you, uh, that are more easily, uh, where people are more easily able to latch on to. For example, I mentioned earlier, my, one of my favorite shows is law and order SVU. Um, I like one of the characters on the show. Um, well, I love a lot of the characters on the show. Uh, Olivia Benson's awesome, but I also like Finn Tutuola, uh, played by Ice T. And does uh, does every one of Finn Tutuola's characteristic resonate with me? No, but I can still identify with his character because there are pieces in that character that I identify with. Same thing you're doing with your marketing and with identifying who your ideal character or who your ideal customer is for your product or service. This gives your people that you're trying to reach something to latch on to like, hey, I do resonate with that. And now once they resonate with that, now they have almost a clear channel to your products and services as opposed to being lost in the wave of overwhelm of everybody else who's just trying to reach everybody. Right. And so that's why we encourage you to define a character. Now, another important part here, you might say, well, yeah, Marcus, yeah, I'm trying to reach John, but I'm also trying to reach Beth. Perfect. All right. What we suggest to find a character for John and to find a separate character for Beth. The more you're able to get into um, Beth's head over here and into John's head over here, the better able you are to reach each one of them individually. So we a lot of people try and say, all right, I'm trying to reach Beth, John, Jack, you know, everybody all in this one bubble. You run into the same issue of trying to um, of, of sounding too general. Specificity online is what really gets through uh, to your audience and to your uh, target group. So be specific and target each one of them and promote and market to each one of them separately. That's the key. And that's why we define why that's why we encourage you to define a character. So you're going to define a character for each. And if you're just starting in this, we recommend that you start out defining a character, um, define your ideal customer and maybe your second ideal customer. Um, later down the road, yes, you'll have several different profiles of various, um, you'll have several different profiles of, uh, ideal characters and ideal customers. Um, but start with one or two, start with your top and then your second, uh, to get you started. And then as you get used to it, you'll add on more later. All right. So once you define your character, who are they? You define them in detail. You define them just like your character in a movie or in your TV show. This question is extremely important. What are their pain points? So your character has some sort of pain and your product or service as an entrepreneur should be looking to alleviate that pain or solve that pain. Now, this takes some thinking, especially if you are alleviating a pain that the cut that your ideal customer isn't yet aware that they have. Right. So sometimes you are educating them on the pain that they have or didn't know that they have. And you're also trying to encourage them to consider your product and services at the same time. So identifying their pain points around the problem, around your products or services or around the uh, their pain points that your problems and services solve for them. That's really going to help you really cut through this clutter of online um, marketing overwhelm as well. All right. So what keeps them up at night around that, uh, around your pain point, around their pain point is also another huge consideration that you want to take a huge consideration. You want to take into consideration. Yeah. It's redundant on purpose because it's that important uh, there. What keeps them up at night around this pain point is extremely important because if you can speak to that and if you can speak into that, that's going to really help resonate with them as well. So let's look at this from several different angles. Now I've defined a character. I said, John, now I'm inside John's head and I'm really thinking, uh, trying to identify what are John's pain points. All right. Now, not uh, not only what are John's pain points, what keeps John up at night around these pain points that we can uniquely solve with our pro products and services? If I can identify, if I can get into John's head, now I'm better able to reach John, right? And of course, because just because I might just because I'm defining John here, that clarity and specificity is also going to apply to um, other people who are like John or who see themselves in John. So think of it kind of like a target. Uh, you might be familiar with the target emblem of uh, the store target. And you see that there's this big circle and then there's smaller circles in there. Right. So even if you don't hit the exact bullseye, you can still come within earshot of 
other places on the target, right? And this is why another reason we call it your target customer or your ideal customer, because that's what we're aiming for. But even being that specific, we're still able to hit those outer rings of um, of our clients and people who matched kind of the characteristics of those outer clients as well, or characteristics of uh, our ideal client as well. So their pain points, also what keeps them up at night? Two crucial questions. And going back to what we talked about yesterday, this gets into their psychographics. Um, not only just who they are, how old they are, how much money they make, but what are they thinking about? What's their mindset like? So remember those two questions. What are their pain points and what keeps them up at night? All right. Now, extremely, extremely important. After you identify the pain points, after you identify what keeps them up at night, after you define them as a character, extremely, extremely important. Why should they solve their pain points through you? Why should they solve their pain points through you? It's not just enough that I know his pain points, that I know her pain points, that I know what keeps her up at night. Why should they choose you? And this gets into the unique selling proposition. Oh, excuse me. The unique selling proposition that we talked about earlier. What about your product or service uniquely distinguishes you from other people offering your exact same thing? Now, here's something that's interesting. Accord in the eyes of your consumer, in the eyes of your user, somebody else does exactly what you do. Now, we as a business owner, we might not well know we're a marketing agency, but we're not like those marketing agencies. Yeah, we know that. But in the eyes of our consumer, when they hear marketing agency, you can't really throw a rock without hitting a marketing agency, right? So question is, why should we choose you? Why should they choose you? We get this question a lot with real estate agents um, and we ask them, okay, why would I choose you? And we often get a very generic answer. Well, uh, I know the best homes and the best prices and the best parts of town. Any real estate agent can say that, right? So what uniquely defines you or what uniquely positions you to be the person that they should use to alleviate their pain points, that they should be the per uh, that you should be the person that um, they give their business to. And so what makes you unique and what makes you different? A lot of companies don't spend enough time defining their USP, your unique selling proposition. And we say, and I like to harp on that unique selling proposition because your USP has to be unique. It has to be Y-O-U meek selling proposition. So yes, you as a business owner, you as the, um, executive level or the executive team in your company, it is going to take some of you to realize or to articulate to your end users, hey, yeah, this is why we are unique. Uh, more than just that you're a good person, more than we provide the best customer satisfaction. Here's a clue. If you've heard it somewhere else before, it's not a unique selling proposition. If you've heard it somewhere else before, it's not a unique selling proposition. And so spend some time developing your USP, your unique selling proposition. You might remember uh, a little um, a little ways back in um, the introduction. Well, I was trying to go back here, but um, yeah, uh, in the introduction, I said that part of our USP, our unique selling proposition is uh, that we're brain and behavior experts. And we literally, we study the brain. We study why people do what they do, especially when it comes to making buying decisions online. And so that unique selling proposition, extremely, extremely important. Make sure you define it. Make sure it actually talks to the pain points that your customers have. And it talks to what keeps them up at night. You will have a lot more um, reach, a lot more effective reach in your marketing campaigns and your social media posts and your emails, especially if that's at the core of what you stand for as a business. Awesome sauce. So we could talk about ideal customer all day long because it is really that important. But I want to give you a few other tips and uh, tactics before we close out the session. And so one thing uh, when we're talking about making more uh, money from your marketing and more cash from your campaigns, think of your campaigns. Each of your campaign is what we call a customer journey or customer experience. So what is that experience like each step along the way? of that customer campaign and that customer experience. So we like to use the analogy. Think of it as someone getting into the uh, with our company, Social Marquee. We like to think of it as our clients getting into the Social Marquee car and we driving them from each step along the way that we want them to reach. 
right? This way they don't have to do anything except get in the car, buckle up and enjoy the ride. So you really want to think of your customer journey in that experience. So from the time that they have never heard about your company to the time that they are done with your company, what does each step along that journey look like? And you might be thinking, well, that's a lot of steps. And like, yeah, you're right. That's why it's a journey. It's just a thing just like your life. Your life uh, journey probably is not linear. What's happened in the past is linear, uh, but going in the future, it can go in several different directions, right? Um, when you know your customer mindset, when you know your customer psychographics, you can better uh, align with that journey that they're going to take with your products and services and better align with their intent and better align with their pain points so that you can better serve them. And so that's why this is such a big piece and big component. You might remember from a couple of uh, slides earlier, we were talking about the iceberg. And in that iceberg, we had psychographics in that 95% that's beneath the water. Just like um, your psychographics go into that customer journey. These are some of the things that most people, most businesses don't do. They don't focus on the customer journey. They don't focus on the customer experience. They don't focus on a lot of these pieces, but these are some of the most important pieces to focus on. So think about that customer journey. All right. Another tip in how to make more money from your marketing efforts and how to get more cash from your campaigns. We love this. And this is called get them into an environment that you control. So a lot of times people will invite them to a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Um, and, and that's great. That's great as a start. And Remember whose house you're in when you're on anything Facebook. You're in Facebook's house, right? So Facebook group is great. You might have your community, but you have your community inside Facebook's house. Your Facebook page is great and you have your community inside Facebook's house, right? So this is great, but you want to get them into an environment that you control. Right. You want to get them into your house. So meeting them on Facebook is a great way to meet them. But let's invite them from once we get them to Facebook. Let's make sure we get them into an environment we control. So one way of doing this, you're actually in it right now. The summit. All right. Many of you came from uh, we have several speakers in the summit and you were maybe on their email list or maybe you were on their social media uh, feeds. And you saw this and you said, hey, yes, I'd like to attend a free summit to learn how to do small business better. And now you're here. This is an environment that we control. Right. So we uh, invited you from, to our space from those spaces. Right. So make sure you get them into an environment that you control. This can be your email list. And I know technically your email list, there's uh, you know, you don't totally control that environment, but you have a lot more control of that environment than you do. <clears throat> You have a lot more control over that environment than you do, for example, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn, something like that. Um, so get them into an environment that you control is extremely, extremely important. All right. Now, this is what we've been talking about almost this whole summit and it's think deeper and go deeper. So a lot of a lot of society actually now, unfortunately, is very surface level. Um, a lot of it doesn't have much depth. And so um, people will say, hey, yeah, I want to market my products and services to kids. Right. Um, we always encourage people to think deeper and go deeper. And part of that is looking at the customer journey. Part of that is looking at their psychographics. Part of that is all of these components. So that, you know, OK, if I'm uh, if my ideal customer has these types of pain points, if my ideal customers are having these types of um, uh, uh, or this type of thing is keeping my client up at night. If I can go deeper into that understanding, if I can think deeper about that understanding, you will be amazed of some of the other things that happen as a result of you just going deeper and thinking deeper about that client experience and about um, the things that are related to the mindset of your customer excuse me, uh, about, uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. You will, you will be amazed at what happens when you go deeper and think deeper about uh, the mindset of your customer, just a smorgasbord of things that can happen, right? And so as you go deeper and think deeper, uh, the challenge of that is people say, well, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to go deeper and think deeper. I need the money now, or we need to do this now. And we understand there's a, as a small business owner, there are a lot of competing priorities all happening at the same time, all of which need your attention. So you might be thinking, I don't have the time to think deeper or go deeper. One way we suggest doing this is thinking deeper and going deeper is all about developing the strategy. And without the strategy, you're just kind of out there just uh, 
throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing and praying and hoping something sticks. We also call it the spray and pray method. People are spraying the marketplace and praying that something lands, right? It's not really too effective. Uh, so one way we suggest is actually schedule time in your calendar specifically for strategy every week, um, at least every week. Uh, schedule time specifically for strategy and then at least a few times a year, schedule times in your calendar specifically for strategic planning with your team. Uh, where you look at your previous goals from the quarter before or the year before and you forecast the quarter coming up or the year coming up. So these strategic planning meetings can really help you, one, make sure that you're devoting time to thinking dig deeper and going deeper, learning about the customer journey and the customer experience. But they have uh, and it helps to fight that uh, temptation of saying, I don't have time. We have time for what we make time for. So if you make time for it in your schedule, at least an hour a week and at least a couple of hours every quarter or so, you'll be amazed of how some of the uh, the benefits that can happen as a result of that. So think deeper, go deeper and schedule time to think deeper and go deeper. Final tip, an easy C to A, an easy C to A and a CTA is a call to action. All right. So a call to action just means we want them to do something. It doesn't necessarily mean we want them to buy something. It could be you want them to give you an email. You want them to like your page. You want them to like a post. Right. So give them an easy call to action, but not only an easy call to action, give them a simple, simple, single call to action. So a lot of times we'll see social media posts and someone has a post that says, um, you know, there's something nice on the post. And then at the post, they'll say, all right, if you like this, um, please like our page, share it with your friends, comment below, um, and feel free to call us at this number or this number. You've just given them six call to actions. Now you've overwhelmed them and now you've just um, increased the probability that they're not going to do anything because you gave them too many options and now they're overwhelmed. All right. So give them a simple single call to action. You determine what that call to action is and then you um, you construct the customer journey after they take that call to action as opposed to giving them so many different options. A lot of times we think, and it could be counterintuitive, we think, well, I'm giving them more options. If they prefer to call, if they prefer to like, if they prefer to share, if they prefer to do all these other things, they can do what they want, right? Um, I know it comes from a good place, but it doesn't work that way in digital marketing, right? So give them a single call to action if you want them to subscribe if you want them to sign up for your email list um, another way to um, we see people all the time saying hey sign up for our newsletter just a, a word of advice people ain't going to sign up for your newsletter there how many of you out there are just looking for another thing to do i see no hands i see no com i see no uh yes give me something else to do i see none of that in the comments right um and so People aren't they don't want to sign up for your newsletter. They don't want to sign up for your email list. Tell them what they actually get as a result for doing whatever you want them to do. If you want their email, tell them exactly what they're going to get. They're going to get this freebie or they're going to get invited to this session, et cetera. Um, be specific. And so that goes right along with the think deeper and go deeper. These are some of the things that have come out in your strategic planning meetings as you think deeper and go deeper. Also, um, I want to address something that I said earlier when I was talking about CTAs and people talking about likes, shares, comments and everything. Um, don't tell them to like, share and comment. Actually, if those words appear on your social media posts, Facebook is actually going to ding you because it uh, doesn't like those words. It, it, um, we call it CSTL, like you're going to see St. Louis, C, the letter C, STL. Uh, and what that stands for is comment, share, tag, like, comment, share, tag, like. Do not include any of those words in any of your social posts, especially on Facebook, because Facebook now sees those as spam. They see those as uh, if you're um, they, they see it as if it is a post worthy of someone liking, you don't have to tell them to like it. For example, uh, I am a black man. <laughs> I don't have to tell you this. You can see it. Right? Facebook looks at it the same way. If your post is like worthy, if it's share worthy, people will do it automatically. You don't have to tell them. And because so many people have abused that on Facebook, um, they now say, hey, yeah, if we see like, share, tag or comment in a post, we're automatically going to reduce its effective reach um, or its free reach in the marketplace, which is already pretty low on the free reach anyway.
All right. All right. So these four things, the customer journey, get them an environment you control. Think deeper, go deeper and give them an easy call to action. These are some ways that you're going to help increase how you get more money from your marketing and how you get more cash from your campaigns. Wow. I said an earful. So um, continue to we see several questions that have come in. Great. Uh, you don't see them in the chat, but we see them all here. Um, and we will be addressing as many of those as humanly possible in the live Q&A. If you have questions uh, in the la latter part of what we just talked about, still enter it in the chat. Even after we end the session today, we will uh, we'll still leave the chat open for those final questions to come in uh, for a few minutes. Also, if you are watching the replay, you're not joining us live right now. If you're watching the replay, no problem. Uh, right below the video where this replay is pay playing on the replay page, you'll see a section for comments. If you leave your comments there, my team and I will scrub those so that we can address as many as possible of those on the live Q&A as well. Live Q&A coming up later today. The next session for today is coming up uh, in a few minutes as well. So we hope that you will attend those sessions. We hope that you'll continue to uh, spread the word about Small Biz Better Summit. We're really on a mission to continue to help people small biz better. And so we enjoy it. We hope you are enjoying it as well. Continue to leave us your comments, leave us your questions. We crave those as well. And with that, we're going to ship you off into the next session. The next session coming up, you have the information in your email if you register for that session. Um, so it'll show you exactly how to uh, access that session the exact same way you access this session here today. Um, so again, leave us your questions, leave us your comments. Thank you so much for joining us all around the world. Day two of Small Biz Better. Let's talk about money. Super excited. And we will see you in the next session.